encourage your soul, enlighten your mind, and empower your faith. This is The Light Network. If you want to be a serious Bible student, a successful servant, and a powerful preacher, this is the podcast for you. Hello and welcome to Preachers in Training. My name is Robert Hatfield and this is the podcast where we talk about all things preaching and ministry. I want to welcome you into this episode uh, and we find ourselves on location today in Paducah, Kentucky at the uh, church building of the Central Church of Christ here in Paducah and uh, that means that joining us is Adam Fawn. Good to see you, Adam. It's good to see you too. Welcome to the beautiful background uh, classroom that we're <laughs> this in here. Is nice. This is nice. No, it is. I mean, if we, we say that jokingly. It is yeah. nice. I mean, the, the the paint colors are updated. Everything <laughs> around this building looks really good. It, you know. Yeah, a lot of work that. has gone on the last few years. That's good. Good thing. A lot of yeah. good people. You guys were doing some con- major construction in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> we were under construction from very late January of 2019 yes. through Hello COVID. <laughs> So. That brings us up to the present. That's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, very good. Uh, this is fun because I, maybe at PTP we've done a podcast in real life. I think so. It, it's the rarity rather than, it's the exception rather than the rule. Yeah, so. I was actually a little nervous about this. I was like, this, what? you know, well, no, because I was like, you know, you and I yeah. usually have the safety of distance. And I'm like, this, this could go completely <laughs> off the rails. The you know. safety of distance. <laughs> <laughs> if this were late night at TLN, that would be the show title. There you go. The safety that's, of distance. That's it. Uh, you're, you're here doing a gospel meeting as we're recording this and doing a, just a tremendous job oh, for us. We appreciate it. Well, Great uh, deal. It's an honor to be here. I've really been looking forward to being here with you guys. So that's a lot of fun. We're talking today about uh, the work of preacher, of the preacher is working. And that's a, a throwback as our, it's a listener request. And our listener said, I know that's a throwback to one of Brother Tom Holland's book titles from mm-hmm. back in the day. He only wrote like 85. Yeah. <laughs> that's not much of a stretch, actually. <laughs> that's probably right <laughs> that's on probably it. about it. But uh, uh, it, it was a good title then. And uh, the, the point that the listener has asked us to discuss is just, you know, we're, there's something we're supposed to do. Right. We don't just sit in an office all the time. Right. It is interesting that we get quite a lot of listener requests around this topic. Mm -hmm. Uh, What do you do every day? Uh, I think we could go into the realm of time management and things like that too. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe you've been on at least one or two of those episodes in the past. I don't know. you. Adam is one of our regulars, by the way. (laughs) It's not a season until Adam (laughs) Fawn is on Preachers in Training. I'm just saying. (laughs) I appreciate that. Now, one of the things I remember that we have, we haven't at least touched on this, was Mm -hmm. that time we went for broke and did like all of 1st Timothy or something or 2nd Timothy. and, (laughs) and and of course, that comes up over and over again. Yeah. Just what's the preacher supposed to be doing? And I'm yeah. just, just hitting that pretty hard, I don't know, 83,000 times in those, <laughs> those podcasts. Well, and, you know, uh, there are those moments in Scripture, right, like First Timothy 3, where elders are specifically addressed mm-hmm. and deacons are specifically addressed. Often it is through the preacher that those, those roles are specifically addressed. And so... Um, I have found it at times that it can be a little frustrating because, uh, well, what by the New Testament pattern am I supposed to be doing? Specific, I mean, elders have job descriptions right. and they should. Um, and but you know, and 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 sometimes I've, I remember in my early days. Well, how does my role differ? From a deacon, <laughs> you know, and how am I more than just a paid and unqualified at the time? I didn't have kids or anything. How am I more than just a paid deacon, right? I've wondered about the same thing, actually. Yeah. In yeah. fact, I've, I've often wondered, and this is not a, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a quote-unquote scriptural question, but I think it is an interesting thing to think through. Mm-hmm. I've often wondered if a man who is a preacher who is qualified, married, has children, shouldn't be a deacon. Yeah, because his role is so similar, serving under the oversight of elders, you know, doing a specific task, mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't think there's a scriptural right or wrong answer. Yeah. But it's an interesting thing to think through because the uh, what we're supposed to be doing in a lot of ways does fit so well more with uh, with that role within the church. Mm-hmm. And 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 the question sometimes is, well, what'd be the difference? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, true. The, the difference is he gets paid and the other deacons don't. That's right. right. That's, that's often true. Yep. Yeah, that's right. But uh, to, to your point, going back to the discussions that we had a couple of seasons ago, go back and check out those archives on about uh, we did a whole – Four season uh, or four episode, not four seasons, four episode it felt like series. Four seasons we were doing it. <laughs> it did. We did on First Timothy and then another one on Second Timothy. And I think Brad McNutt did one, and and you did the other one. Um, 
and I've forgotten whether you did first or second. I have to. It's been a long time ago. Yeah, it has. But um, uh, it, Scripture does give us a lot of insight into what we're to do, and you know, fulfill the work of the ministry, do the work of the ministry. You know, I mean, that, mm-hmm. that's in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, as vague as that is, that's still there, and that's something that we're to do. Um, my elders at North Charleston used to tell me, you know, Robert, you're the only one out of 200 of us that's going to get up and preach this Sunday. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they, and I, they said that in support of my time and, you know, to say you could kill yourself trying to be everywhere at the same time. Make, make sure you prioritize your studies yep. while you're also prioritizing ministering to people. Yep. Um, I appreciated that. Somebody is going to be the preacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody's got to do that. That is a vital thing. There's a new Testament precedent for that. Um, it's a non-negotiable, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, the act of preaching, and so um, obviously there's a portion of that that's going to take up a huge amount of our time as we sort of dive into some of this here. Absolutely, and and it has to be, if not the priority, a huge priority. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, you know somebody's going to preach on Sunday, yeah. And if you're being paid to do it, it might help you actually prepared for we, that. We hope that they're ready. Time. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but it also those dovetail. Um, you are ministering to people when you are thinking of that congregation as you prepare those lessons. Mm-hmm. And you, if you're just throwing that's stuff right. together, you're probably not ministering to anybody but yourself. Yeah. Because that's probably who you're thinking about. Yeah. But if you are spending time studying and uh, spending time preparing those lessons, knowing I'm going to be standing in front of X number of people this Sunday who I love. Mm-hmm. I want them to see that I've thought of them, not just, oh, here's three great insights. I've thought about some obscure passage in Zechariah this week because I'm such yeah. a scholar. No, I was thinking of you mm-hmm. as I was thinking about this. And so there, there's a ministry aspect just to the preparation of those lessons all the, all the way through. And that adds a weight to what we're doing, even beyond mm-hmm. the weight of, of, you know, responsibly handling the scriptures and all of that that's there. I mean, sometimes it's just hard to cover a topic because you know that that's something that people are struggling with out mm-hmm. in the pew, whether that's a negative or a positive topic, right? I mean, sometimes it's just difficult. Absolutely. There's no yeah. doubt about it. And, and every congregation is different. Right. Uh, but again, you know, I don't, you shouldn't, I don't think we should separate preaching and ministry mm-hmm. because they are, you know, two sides of the same coin at, mm-hmm. at farthest apart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that, we ought to have an episode on that sometime, how to ministering from the pulpit, because I mean, that's a, that's a to, to the point that you just made, right? It's more than just here are some observations from Zechariah because I'm so smart mm-hmm. because I've studied so much. It's let me, Dan Winkler would say, communicate the heart of God mm-hmm. into your heart. And that's sort of the way that it is. That's what it's supposed to be. And, and there, yeah. we all know there are sermons that are more um, academic, you know, more scholarly. We, we, all, we all get that. There's a place for those. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and no matter what kind of style of preacher a, a guy is, sometimes those are going to come through also. Just mm-hmm. because of the nature of a text or the nature of a topic, that's, that's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. But even as scholarly as a lesson might be, you're still preaching to people, and you know the people, which takes the ministry side, but also you need to think of those people as you're preparing even the most you know, deep or scholarly or acad- whatever word you want to use, yeah. academic of lesson, um, you know, who am I preaching to? You know, I'm, you know, when I preach at Central, I'm not preaching to Gold Hill Road or North Charleston or anywhere else. I'm mm-hmm. preaching to Central. I need to think of those people. What's going on here? And is there something in this lesson that connects with their lives, the life of our community, you know, the life of whatever, our eldership, whatever it happens to be? Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. But but it should be obvious those things have been thought through as we're coming through a lesson. There's a ton of different ways you could preach about prayer, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, because you know the needs of the congregation there mm-hmm. or maybe the elders have have – tipped you off, so to speak, of, of a specific need or a specific way to address that, ministering to that congregation there locally. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, work of the preacher is working. Yeah. The, the prior, a priority, huge priority, has to be in study, sermon preparation, lesson preparation, while thinking through these are the people I'm preaching to on Sunday. So people, I, I'm often asked from listeners, you know, how much time uh, you know, what, what kind of hours are we logging on sermon prep? And I remember asking Gary Hampton many, many seasons ago, and he was kind of like, well, it, it depends, yep. you know, and he, 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 he mentioned that, you know, after a while you sort of get a body of work and it doesn't take you as long to get up to speed on Philippians as it once did, because you've, you've got the introductory material already done and you sort of have those notes jotted in the margin of your Bible mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, is, I know you're, you seem to be a very methodical 
kind of guy. I don't mean that in a <laughs> negative way. I mean, you, you, you are analytical. You think through things. You, you see systems, it seems. And maybe I've yep. mischaracterized you. Except for the organizational office, yeah. That's, for, that's, that's basically what you've seen this week. There's so a reason why we're not there right now. You got that right. <laughs> that the, the camera for this thing would be sitting sideways. <laughs> no, it's not as bad as it sounds. I've seen way worse. But, uh, I mean, is there a benchmark? I mean, in... For me, it varies based on the, yep. the content and the, the passage and all of that, yep. too. 100% the same way. Yeah. Um, you don't want to say there are lessons you just throw together. Because hopefully, no. nev- hopefully that's never the case, you know, yeah. as we use that phrase just casually. Yeah. But there are lessons that come together very quickly. When it's time to preach on baptism, we should be in pretty good shape there, yeah. by and large. Um, uh, you know, baptism or, or just a text that you've loved your whole life. You yeah. know, you don't preach it all the time, but hey, I haven't preached on it in a long time, so I'll come back to it now. And, you know, that those lessons might come together quickly. Mm-hmm. But if we're going to preach the whole counsel of God, we have to have humility that says there are some parts of the whole counsel of God I don't understand as well as I should yet. Yeah, yeah. And those are going to take a – I might not be preparing those lessons the week I'm preaching. I'm not, I'm not be, you know, I'm studying this text because I know I'm preaching it six months from now. Yeah. But I don't know that text very well. Right. Uh, and so I'm going to spend some time you know, just in the background um, over the course of weeks or even months – you know, thinking through this book of the Bible, this text, this topic. Um, and by the time I get up on a Sunday morning and preach, who knows? It might have been a hundred hours it was put into that lesson. But, you know, yeah. rarely is that the case to mm-hmm. that level. But any preacher knows what I mean when I say that, too. There are other lessons you think, oh, that just kind of came together. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, it was just, but, but a lot of it is because you've studied in general before. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some of the basic thoughts are already there. You just had to right. put them on paper or on yeah. your computer, you know, and, and there they are. Uh, but yeah, it's, it varies very widely mm-hmm. uh, depending on the text, the topic and your own education, your own study ahead of time. So mm-hmm. I don't think there is any, you have to spend X number of hours per mm-hmm. X number of minutes. That's just not a practical. And it's not also uh, prudent for any text or topic you're going to be preaching. On. Right. It'd be really great if, and I've, you know, you've heard the benchmarks before. If you're going to speak for 28 minutes, you ought to study for 28 hours. Mm-hmm. Well, that'd be fantastic, except I preach Sunday morning and Sunday night, and there's a Bible class, maybe two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you're going to run out hours in the week That's right. <laughs> before it's all over. Right. <laughs> so and something's got to And give. I get what people mean when they say that. Yes. Um, but like you said, a mathematically, in some cases, it's impossible. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes guys have you know radio programs and everything else. They literally do not have as many hours in a week, not just a work week, but, yeah. <laughs> but a physical week That's right. uh, to to prepare that much material. Uh, but also, it just is one of those things where you, sometimes you sometimes you do have enough of the background stuff in your head, yeah. Um, or, or you've preached on this before, and it's not you're just redoing a sermon, but hopefully you've got some good material to start with. And so there's some of the prep work has, has been done, you know, eight years ago when you preached on this at another yeah. congregation or a gospel meeting or a vacation Bible school, and you don't just pull it out and re-preach it, but a lot of the work has been done. And so you can, you, you can, you know, save a lot of time in those ways yeah. as well. I know you keep a pretty big cushion, uh, especially by comparison to what I often do in your sermon prep, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you stay what a couple of weeks or even more than that ahead. Yeah. More than that. Usually more than that. Okay. So, um, first of all, I- inherent in that is a lot of planning <laughs> time management. <laughs> you want to give us a peek behind the curtain on that and, and tell us how you do that and, and maybe even why you do that. It's changed over the years. I, I for two or three years, I used to be one of those people that uh, you know planned a whole year's worth of sermon ahead of time, and and that was neat. And it was frankly, I'm, I'm weird. It was kind of fun in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, but I stopped doing that for several reasons. But now um, I try to, and there's no there's no perfect mathematical formula to it for me because I'm, I'm not that systematic. <laughs> but what I try to do is have the next three months sermons before me, like like. like Mm. As we record this, it's October. So I've got November, October, November, December sermons mm-hmm. on my computer screen. Here's where I'm going these three months. What is that? Is that like a just a document, like a template, or is there stuff yeah. filled in there right now? Or? Yeah, it's it, it's it's on Google Keep, and it's just here's October 2021, November 2021, mm-hmm. December 2021. And here's okay. the dates, here's the titles, the text, okay. that sort of thing. Gotcha. Um, it's, just, it's just a list is all it is. Okay. Um, and then I try to write the sermons between a month and six weeks ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, so I try to be about at least a month ahead on actually writing the sermons. Um, obviously, I change sometimes. You know, an emergency arises, different things happen. Some, sometimes, frankly, I'll, I'll be like, okay, that's the one I was supposed to preach this Sunday. And Robert Hatfield was here for me. You know, he preached on that same subject on Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be silly. 
mm-hmm. to come back in and preach on the exact same text or the exact same you know topic basically and so it's it's not an inflexible thing um, but the reason I do that one is Saturday night specials are not special no no there's nothing special um, and we all have those weeks where you get to Friday and think you know there's a Sunday two days from now. I kind of forgotten about that because I've done three funerals and right, and right. sister so and so was called six times this week and every phone call has lasted forty five minutes mm-hmm. and somebody came in for marriage counseling and you want, and you love these things you you're, you're helping when you do this yeah but they eat a humongous amount of time and I'm not one of those people that can throw a sermon together on Friday and Saturday and it'd be worth anything it's mm-hmm. it's going to be obvious I didn't put any time into it whatsoever um, and so this guards against it buffers against that and uh, you know there's, there's several ways to do that one, one I mentioned actually on the podcast before is weeks when I'm not preaching like mm-hmm. the Sunday upcoming I'm not preaching I still write at least one sermon mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, well, I can't do that yeah you can mm-hmm. <laughs> you can write, may not write two but you can write one yeah. we'll do that a couple times a year now you're a week ahead automatically um, and you keep doing that three or four years now you're a month ahead mm-hmm. um, and that's just one one way to do it uh, but it helps me just to you know see okay here's where I'm going the next three or four months mm-hmm. and it helps just in your general study uh, because you're thinking about not just this Sunday's sermon right. but you read something or you you know you're reading randomly in a commentary for this sermon but oh here's a comment that go really well with this sermon I've got six weeks from now well now a little bit of your study is done for that one too mm-hmm. do you ever forget i mean by the time so you've been working on this for a month all right now four weeks have passed and it's time to preach it and the outline's just been sitting there for a while i mean do you <laughs> is it hard to get up to speed when you do it like that that is a personality thing for me it's not and the reason it, the reason is simply this i use making my powerpoints as the review mm-hmm. um my powerpoints are not extremely detailed but every main point's going to be on there you know a couple sub points that sort of thing yeah. and just reading back to the sermon creating that you know the powerpoint um is my review mm-hmm. and so some people that this does not work i get that mm-hmm. but for me it does um and that's just how it you know it comes back to mind is okay yeah th- this is that sermon <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a sermon i was writing i thought a picture of a sunset yes that's this one you know and uh, and then right. you know of course then over the weekend friday and saturday i'm reading through it over and over and over mm-hmm. again and getting it there but no i it actually works fairly well for me it may not work for everybody but it works for me i had the conversation a few weeks ago with hiram kemp and, and uh, chance hicks mm-hmm. about sermon outlines so what 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 kind of format are your outlines in? I mean, is this full sentence manuscript? You're, what what are we doing? I, I listened to that program and you were uh, like, I can't believe they do full <laughs> sentence outlines. So get ready to say it again. Yeah. They're full sentence outlines. I do full sentence outlines, <laughs> but I don't do manuscripts. And that's what those guys did was manuscripts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mine, mine are. I mean, every word I'm going to say except for good morning is is on that is on that. So your manuscript paper. in that too? It, it, it's it's just an outline. In an form, outline but, manuscript. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, other than basically good it. morning or, you know, as we stand yeah. and sing, <laughs> it's going to be on there. But when you preach, it's it's basically without notes, kind of like mm-hmm. Hiram said, right? Mm-hmm. It's so, um, what, you just sort of use that as a guide? It just helps you as you're going through it? Yeah. So um, I could, that would be the key to me to doing it ahead of time. Yep. Because that way you just read through it and you got your thoughts right yep, there. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And typically um, on Sunday mornings uh, when I go into the pulpit, I have with me uh, an index card that's got uh, what my PowerPoint's going to be and maybe like a quotation I forgot. Now, if it's a long quotation, I'll take that in the pool with me because I'm, mm-hmm. me- I'm just not that good at memorizing long text. I never have been. Um, but I have an index card that just has, you know, it's full. It kind of looks like I'm cramming for an exam <laughs> like you used to in high <laughs> school. Like, make, make sure you write everything down on this one thing. Yeah. Uh, but now, frankly, on Sunday nights, uh, weeknights of a gospel meeting, whatever, my brain does not work as well at night. Yeah. So I take my entire manuscript into the pulpit um, because I just I do not memorize. I do not keep memory stuff as well. I'm mm-hmm. more of a morning person anyway. Mm-hmm. And so by the time Sunday night comes along, I'm like, okay, what's my name? You know, my, 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 <laughs> much less what I'm supposed to be talking about here. Right. Uh, but that, that just works well for me to have it, have it all up there with me just in case. Is is there a word count or a specific page number that you're trying to hit for timing's sake? <laughs> you're getting me no, you're the, the ultimate nerd. Here. I'm sorry. Yes. I, I like to nerd out on this stuff. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, I learned a long time ago that typically I speak about 100 words a minute in the pulpit. Wow. So I shoot for 3,000 words. That's 30 minutes. Okay. Um, I don't always hit on dead on. I'm not worried yeah. about hitting it dead on, but I know if I'm around 3,000 words, mm-hmm. I've got a 30-minute sermon. Um for sure. But I, I try to be within about a 200 word range of that. I mm-hmm. uh, don't always, sometimes I go much longer. Sometimes it's like, Oh, 2,400. They're going to be happy tonight. You know, <laughs> uh, but uh, that, that's what I'm shooting for is yeah. right, right in that range. Yeah. Okay. So I could see where if, if you're trying to 
plan sermons out. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you're planning basically a quarter at a time, mm-hmm. right? And then you're going through that, and then you're working on those maybe kind of piecemeal. Is that sort of how that works? Or is it this week I'm focused on this sermon? Yep. Okay. If, if at all possible, that's the okay. way I try to do it. That's gotcha. not, not always possible, but that's right. what I shoot for. But doing it the manuscript way makes it where you can easily pick back up. Yep. You can get back into the flow, or you can say, okay, I'm, I've written through point two or whatever, and then pick back up. Yep. Next that's, day or whatever. That's exactly it. it. Yeah. yeah. And that's one of the reasons it works for me so well is, you know, there are times where you're going to have, you know, you're going to get a phone call that changes the next two or three days. Yeah. Right. You know, somebody passes away. Somebody's having, you know, rushed the hospital with heart surgery or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you come back to your office two days later um, and, Oh yeah, I remember where I was. I was mm-hmm. from, of course, you know, yeah. My commentaries are laying right there. You know, I, I was on page eighty six of this yeah, commentary right, and are. point two of the sermon. Here we go. You know, you know, let's, let's, let's go right there. And it, it really does help when that happens. Uh, yeah. Just to have, you know, in, instead of illustration about dog, I have no idea. Yeah, right. But you know, but here's exactly what I was supposed to say. Oh yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I know where I'm supposed yeah. to go from there. I got some outlines like that. Illustration colon. Yeah. Uh, you know, three words that make no sense to me today. Yep. So. <laughs> yep. Story about cat. Yeah, that's all right. right. Okay. That's helpful. That's a- <laughs> so, um, yeah. And, and by the way, but it, I've, like you said, I've nerded out a little bit. But I like to go down this road. It's clear. <laughs> but uh, circling back around, I mean, having systems in place that, as we said a couple of weeks ago, work for you, mm-hmm. but um, also are sort of hacks for time and help you be the most efficient. I mean, that's vital when we're talking about the work of a preacher, because as important as the sermon is, there's a lot more to it than that. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. And you you said earlier in the program, you can't be in your office all day, every day. No. I mean, I would love it sometimes if I could. And there are days I do. I mean, there are days you have to, to get things done or there are sometimes where things rarely, but they are a little bit slower. That's just the way it is. That's okay. Um, But you know, especially coming out of, let's say it, coming out of COVID, you know, the last year and a half has been kind of nice in a way because you, you kind of had to stay in your office all day or, yeah. you, you know, get things done. Yeah. But you know, I'm already seeing, you know, more demands and that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, at the very least, even if you don't get out of your office, there's, you know, people calling you or you calling them or, yeah. you know, texting back and forth, you know, various things and keeping up with people. And that's just the way it's supposed to be uh, because, just go back to what I said earlier. You're ministering to those people. Right. And if you don't know those people, then how are you supposed to reach out to them through your sermons? The amount of time I've spent on the phone in the last year and a half is kind of staggering. <laughs> you know? <It's>, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, but it's, it's replacing visits in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Not totally, but in many cases, especially hospital visits. Mm-hmm. I, I think I've seen, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here. We didn't talk about this. Okay. I think I've seen you share in the past one of these kind of ministry cards where, mm-hmm. you know, you're trying to, um, you know, I, I've got a goal of making this many phone calls yeah. a week or whatever. I'm sure that varies from week to week. Oh yeah. But is that and a Frank, way? And Frank, I don't even feel it out anymore. I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But, um, is you, that kind of a benchmark to make yeah. sure that you're keeping sort of the weekend balance and doing what you need to be doing? Yeah. Um, the, years ago, at Polish the Pulpit, they would do a, do a uh, seven minutes of wisdom thing. Mm-hmm. And I talked about this. It was, it was five by five was the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And basically, let's see if I can remember it now. It was um, trying to make five visits, five phone calls, five emails, five text messages, and five other communications. We can back, you know, Facebook Messenger or, or whatever. Yeah. Or, or five, I'm sorry, no. No, no, text, text other messages and five cards or letters that, that yeah, was yeah, the yeah um and i frankly i don't worry about filling that out anymore because it, it really was a way for me to do a couple things i wasn't doing all that well mm-hmm. <laughs> to be honest with you and it kind of became more of now just naturally um i realized at the end of the week obviously there's times where i have not done what i should have done yeah you know, I'll, I'll be honest about that but overall it helped me realize stay focused on this stuff. Yeah. If this week you don't make as many visits or frankly, you can't make as many visits because of COVID stuff right. or whatever, wherever you live. Well, have you made a few phone calls this week mm-hmm. more than usual? Or have you, you know, sent a couple extra cards you didn't usually send? Have you, have you, you know, texted more people, whatever. And it just kind of helped build in that be mm-hmm. cognizant of, cause like I said, I, I could be in the office all day, every day. That's just me. That's my mm-hmm. personality. Mm-hmm. But, uh, it just made me forced me to be like, okay, have you reached out to people in whatever way you possibly could several times yeah. uh, throughout the week? And so, that, yeah, if you had, if you need to come up with a, you know, organized way to do that, do it. It's, you know, well, that's just, you know, that's just a system. Yeah. But if it helps you build that heart, right. It's not a bad system. That's right. Yeah. And, and it's, it's okay to build that heart. I mean, mm-hmm. sometimes we beat ourselves up because we say, well, I'm not that person. Well, 
become that person mm-hmm. to the very best of your ability. I'm like you. I, I could I can keep myself busy. You know, <laughs> I don't I don't need other people to you know add to my plate. Uh, but at the same time, it, I, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of good if I'm only focused on you know, me or even making podcasts or whatever yeah. else. I need to focus on the people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it's going to vary depending on where you are, depending on the yes. congregation. Um, here in, at Paducah, um, before COVID, I visited more than I probably ever have. Mm-hmm. People just loved having into their home. That's great, you know. And I'm already seeing coming out of COVID – that that's not quite as the case as it was yet. Mm-hmm. I think it will be, yeah. uh, but I think people are still just like, eh, even though they're coming together in the church building, it's right. like, oh, we get into the house. That's kind of scary. You yeah, know? that's right. Yeah. Uh, but I want your germs lingering over. <laughs> that's right. We don't mind. <laughs> I gotta sleep here. You that's know? right. We don't mind if they linger over our pew. Just you know, just not our not, not our you know lazy boy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but overall, you know, like I haven't spent as much time on the phone as it's like you have. Mm. But we actually share a uh, cell phone plan with my parents. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, dad, one time I was like, how many text messages are you sending? <laughs> and it's like, I mean, th- there are times it's a hundred a day more or more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of it's work, some of it's not, but, yeah. but it's just constant and it should be more than texting all the time. I get that, right. but that's better than nothing. Mm-hmm. That's better than coming up with, oh, well, I can study the next verse too. Yeah. But I can also reach out to this widow. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so there's. You know, keep yourself busy, yes, mm-hmm. but there's a balance of, you know, the ministry uh, of preaching and the ministry of people. Mm-hmm. I call it meaningful interactions. Mm-hmm. It's more than just, hey, how you doing? It's, you know, I, have I had the opportunity to minister in some way? And, of course, that always works both ways, right? I mean, I'm always ministered too, at least right. in encouragement, but yeah. that's important. Uh, sometimes younger preachers sort of uh, resist the expectations that, previous generations have on the preacher, mm-hmm. right? It's important that my preacher is here uh, at the hospital to visit me or that my, in these days that my preacher reached out, mm-hmm. you know, when I was having this surgery, cause they understand he can't be there anymore. Um, it, what do you say to a younger guy who's sort of like, well, you know, other people, there are other members of the church too. <laughs> I mean, what do you say about those expectations? <sighs> I get why there's some resistance to them. Um, I, I really do. And there's pressure associated with that. Yeah. And, and we, we sometimes, I think, push back on, well, if the preacher didn't visit, then I haven't been visited. You know, yes. You know, that's right. 265 members of the congregation visited, but the preacher yeah. was on vacation, so he didn't, you know, yeah. I, I get that. I, I get the pushback. Mm-hmm. But let's go back to, to that text and, you know, that Paul wrote to Timothy. You agreed to fulfill your ministry, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and your ministry is that congregation. Um, can you be everywhere all the time? No, nobody can. And, and, and people, people do need to be taught that, that, you know, yeah. if I'm visiting this hospital, I can't be at the other hospital simultaneously. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's right. literally impossible. But is there a way I can reach out to most, if not all people mm-hmm. going through a difficult time? Yep. And, and, in, and in the culture in which we live, it's even easier than it's ever been. Yeah, that's right. Um, I can be, you know, sitting with someone at the hospital, going, you know, whose family's going through surgery and just say, Hey, I need to step away and make a quick phone call. Do you mind? No one's going to say no to that. No. Especially if you say it's because sister so-and-so is having surgery across town at the other hospital. Can I call her husband? See how she's doing? They're, no, you have yeah. to sit here. No, no, <laughs> nobody's going to do that. Yeah. Um, but most of the time they want to know too, by the yeah, way. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, be as many places as you can, mm-hmm. but reach out to basically everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said earlier, it should be more than a text message all the time. But it's interesting to me. This is one of the things I've learned during COVID that I was actually not shocked, but surprised by. Um, early on, especially, I texted every member of our congregation every week uh, for mm-hmm. about, I think it was about nine weeks, 10 weeks, something like that. No wonder you were sending a ton of texts. Yes, that's, that's where a lot of it came from, yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, but then I've, I've slowed down a lot. I mean, in fact, in fact, I sent one before the gospel meeting that you're here for, and I realized I hadn't sent one in two or three months, or maybe more than that. It'd been a long time, long time. But the people, and I, and I just told people, look, I'm sending this to everybody. I, mean, I, I, want, I want to make it seem like, oh, yeah. I just reached out to you. And I was, they, they were very form. Yeah. There wasn't any doubt about it that this is just, you know, everybody's getting this. But most of the people who either thanked me with a text message back or at church the next Sunday were older members. Mm. And it was because the preacher reached out. Yeah. It wasn't a phone call. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a visit. Obviously, back then, that was quite literally impossible. Yeah. Um, but 
they the ones who would send back most of the time were our older members because they were thankful the preacher cared. Yeah. And I'm not saying text messages should replace everything. But text messaging is better than nothing. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, sometimes you're sitting there studying through something, and, you know, sister so-and-so he hadn't reached out to in a couple weeks flashes mm-hmm. through your mind, well, I mean, to study this text. It takes four seconds yeah. to type out a text message yeah. and just say, hey, I was literally just thinking about you. I want to see how you were doing. Mm-hmm. Is that the most personal thing? No, but it's better than not doing it. That's right. Yeah. And so sometimes that work is just something that flashes through your mind. You just take care of something quick, and maybe you can follow up later with a phone call or a visit or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But doing that short thing is better than doing nothing yeah i agree do you still send letters and stuff snail mail not as many as i used to um that has become and this this is a yeah i won't get too specific here Mm -hmm. that has become more dominated with um we have some people who are in uh, jail ministry, um, mm-hmm. including some of our members who are, who are in prison, mm-hmm. and so those have become the cards, the, the letters that I send. I see. Uh, is yeah. to that, not just a random, you know, hey, just yeah. thinking about you. Um, I need to do better about that, mm-hmm. uh, but that's become more just the the letters that I send is, is to that side of things. Yeah, absolutely, that's good. Uh, I find people still appreciate letters and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, which is interesting too, uh, and even even younger people, you know, who you could just as easily email or text. Uh, but I don't know. There's just something about that. Mm-hmm. That's good as well. That's of course, when I send them, they can't read them. My handwriting's <laughs> atrocious. It's, I would have become a doctor if my handwriting wasn't good enough. <laughs> nice. Um, you know, we could we could talk about all the ins and outs of, of sometimes what preachers are asked to do. I mean, we've, we've hit the big two, right, which has to do with preaching and then the broad topic of visitation. I, I think that you and I share... Uh, this characteristic in that if there's a need, uh, we're going to do everything we can to fulfill that need, Mm -hmm. even if it's not quote unquote in our job description. Um, you know, we live in an age where you can have a lot of ministers. Maybe you're blessed and there are multiple ministers on staff, or maybe you're the only guy. And we just had an episode about dual role ministry with Josh Posey not Mm -hmm. long ago. Um, a a servant heart says, all right, I'm going to step up and do this. And it may mean that I'm logging a few extra hours, or it may mean that I'm doing things after the kids go to bed or something like that, but uh, hopefully not sermon prep because neither you nor I are, are uh, late-night people. Yeah, no, <laughs> no that, those would be very obvious sermons if I did that. Like. But, uh, you know, do you, it, do you have any comments? you want to elaborate on that philosophy? or You know, we, I don't want to be one of these people that has to be asked to do something i mean if there's an obvious need let's just do it yep and and hopefully in that way i can help to set a an example i don't do it to be seen but i can set an example for the congregation but that they'll want to just step up and do things too uh, i guess there are risks you know the co- congregation could get comfortable with the preacher doing all the things and and we sort of that's what we hire him to do Mm -hmm. um so anyway comments about any of those things i'm sort of you and i you and i share that heart i mean if if there's a need you know unless i see a very obvious person who who has who has time and can do it and say hey yeah (laughs) you're the person and it's not wrong by the way to (laughs) ask somebody right then yes step in um if you have more than one minister on staff um there is a place for job descriptions. I fully, I fully believe in that. Yeah. Um, and part of that's just so that, um, for example, if it's a, a preacher and a youth minister, um, there needs to be some understanding that there are certain lanes. You know, um, they need, they do need to overlap a little bit. Mm-hmm. The preacher needs to be seen by the young people, and the youth minister needs to be seen by the congregation as a whole. Yeah. You know, that needs to be you know completely separate. But there needs to be some things where you know the elders can say, look. That's his role. You do your thing. Okay. You don't want to feel like you're constantly stepping on each other. Right, exactly. Yeah. But as far as just general things in the congregation, your know, activities or whatever, it's not that you want to overtake everything. It's not that you want to right. run everything, I hope. Uh, but it is that here's a need that needs to be done. No one's stepping up to do it, and it's a good thing. Could I do this? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Now, could I look for someone to hand it off to eventually? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and I'm probably going to. Yeah. Um, or 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 someone to come alongside and take part of it, you know, delegating out, you know, some of the, some of the things, you know, here at Central, I'm over Lads to Leaders. Well, I don't do everything for Lads to Leaders. Mm-hmm. I drive the train. Yeah. You know, I mean, I do 10% of the work, mm-hmm. if, if that. Um, but they needed somebody to come in and just organize some of the stuff. And I'm a nerd. I organize stuff. <laughs> and so I, I didn't mind doing that because that, that really is a gift, you mm-hmm. know, of, of mine is just organizing things. But am I doing it all? No, I'm, I'm not coaching everything. I, I, 
couldn't survive that. And, and there's no. certain things I wouldn't be good at coaching anyway. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't do our registration. Our secretary does that and, and basically does that just because she's here at the office with the computer. She mm-hmm. has one of those things she can just do. Um, and so yes, step up and fill the need, but look for people to hand it off to or to take certain parts of it. Um, because what you said that the, the, uh, the struggle can be, if you do everything that is the way it's going to be. Mm-hmm. But if you, people say, okay, he stepped up, but then he asked Joe to take over, you know, take this over, come alongside, they're going to see, yeah, I could help Joe because mm-hmm. Joe isn't being paid. Joe's doing this after work on Thursday afternoons and he's got a wife at home. Yeah. And they don't see that in the preachers much. Maybe they should. But mm-hmm. if you look for those people to hand stuff off to or parts to, they probably are going to get help better than you will. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, yeah. Enough said on that, I think. Uh, how about outreach? You know, we, we've talked a lot about internal stuff. Uh, preachers need to be mindful of the evangelist aspect of <laughs> what, what perhaps uh, it, it certain. I don't know that it, it's certainly not the most often emphasized, but it is, it is definitely a point of emphasis mm-hmm. for uh, a preacher, uh, especially a located preacher. Um, I mean, we, we've talked about, you know, having checklists to help us cultivate car uh, uh, concepts and a heart that'll be willing to reach out to other people. Um, could we add, you know, Bible studies or contacts or some kind of evangelistic contact maybe to that list to yep. get us maybe more in that mindset? Of I've heard some sharing. guys say that, that they have lists like the one I mentioned, the five by five thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, one of the things they'll do is they'll have a certain number of visits they want to make every week. Maybe it's five, maybe it's 10, whatever it is Mm -hmm. of which one or two are always Bible studies um, or someone they're trying to cultivate a study with. That's Mm -hmm. a great way of doing that. Um, It might be somebody you you meet for hot chocolate because coffee's terrible. Um, (laughs) Wow. (laughs) (laughs) You know, um, but this is not just a, Hey, had the ball game go last night, and and they yeah, know that. Right. You know, we're meeting to talk about the Bible. It may not be a you know quote unquote Bible study, but hey, I want to talk to you about about some you know things at church, some spiritual things, mm-hmm. um, and that's a great way of doing that. Is you know, of um, just you know, I'm making X number of visits a week or whatever, but one of those or two of those are the lost. Mm-hmm. You know, and not just visiting our own people who are shut-ins all the time. Yeah, and this sounds like a a, a really big thing. No doubt, it's important work. But, you know, cultivating Bible studies, I mean, that's stuff that happens with small interactions and then leads to big, big mm-hmm. things, right? I mean, mm-hmm. um, and it, maybe you need to have policies about meeting times and things like that. I mean, I, uh, depending upon if, if it's if I'm just having a Bible study with somebody, unless they have some really pressing questions, so I, I'm really trying to limit that to one hour. Mm-hmm. That's not because of my time so much. It's just I don't want to give them the fire hose yep. <laughs> when I'm trying to teach them. You know, I want them to understand what they're doing. I, I try and limit other, you know, biblical counseling sessions to an hour as well for, for similar reasons. Uh, you know, sometimes there are rare circumstances where they go much longer than that. But, uh, I mean, it, this is one of those things that if you're not doing it and you're putting it down on a list because you want to do it, it can seem like a big mountain that you have to scale. But it's it's not. It's not that big a deal. Just right. get to it. Yeah. Right. And and just, you know, it's, it's it's the things we preach all the time. Right. Are you ever asking anybody, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, to study or just talk about the Bible or whatever? Yeah. Um, I'm studying with a lady right now, and <laughs> she's the lady that cuts my hair and my son's hair. And, and it was just, you know, a matter of, you know, we go get our hair cut. I would just say, hey, you want to come to church? And for You're months. You're each a fairly captive audience at that That's point. right. <laughs> you know, for, for months and months and months, it wasn't that she didn't, you know, she hated or anything. She just, no. And, and then w- one time she just said, hey, I got a question about the Bible. And I said, there you go. And, mm-hmm. and, and I'm not saying that to toot my own horn. I'm, I'm actually, frankly, not very good at setting up Bible studies. Mm-hmm. But what she said is it's not that big of a deal. If you're actually talking about it when, yeah. when you're out and about and just yeah. doesn't be anything huge, you know, mm-hmm. and you're, your, your kids are playing ball, you're picking your kids up from, you know, from practice, but you're a couple minutes early. And so is somebody else you're talking and just say, Hey, if you ever question, you know, about the Bible, Give me a call. You know, yeah. are you going to get a Bible study of that? Probably not. But you got a better chance of getting one than if you don't say anything. Well, that's right. <laughs> and if you're trying to cultivate that mentality, in my opinion, it'd be all right to celebrate that by listing that. If you're keeping one of these lists or something or got a planner, like I'd, I just put that, hey, I had this conversation with this person. Sometimes I like to look back and, and that reminds me, oh, to circle back around and check back in with mm-hmm. that person. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, to, to celebrate that win a little bit and say, you know what, that that was a... I'm calling it a meaningful interaction. Right. I, I I took it to a different level than just the hey, how are you? 
fine, good yep. to see you. Exactly, you know? exactly. You know, we, we preach all the time that people are souls or souls. We talk about souls, and I wonder sometimes, frankly, if I practice that. Because yeah, yeah. a lot of times when I'm out and about, I'm, I'm busy, I'm in a hurry, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm at Walmart. Um, <laughs> and, and I just I just want to get done. I just want to get home. Right. You know, I, but if, if somebody's standing in line for a while, which you probably are right now, um, <laughs> You know, is any of that interaction ever of any level of spiritual nature? Right. Or is it just, you know, stare straight ahead and you know, don't look, look at anyone? Look at the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or, or like you said, just, hey, how are you? You mm-hmm. know, it doesn't have to be a massive conversation, but is, is there ever a spiritual conversation or even a spiritual, you know, reaching out of some sort, right. uh, which is what we should be doing. I mean, again, I'm not that great at it. It's what, what I'm preaching to myself right now, mm-hmm. uh, but it's the way it should be. And you just never know where those things are going to lead. And it may take months or years, but you just never know. Uh, but it's going to, like I said earlier, it's going to lead to that stuff better than if you don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't understand preachers who aren't busy. I, I'm just going to say it. I just don't understand. <laughs> And um, uh, it, uh, to me, it does not matter the size of the congregation that you serve. I just don't understand preachers who aren't busy. And, uh, you know, if if the congregation is smaller and maybe you're in a season where there aren't as many, to me it comes in seasons, sicknesses, even deaths mm-hmm. seem to come in seasons. Nearing the end of the year, it, in my experience, has often been a time when some of those ramp up. Um, but maybe you're in a smaller congregation and you're in a season where there's not a whole lot of needs pressing, maybe it's time to focus on community evangelism then or something like that. But just to always have those things in your mind to where you know when you do have those rare spare moments or, frankly, when you've worked on the sermon till your eyes are crossed and you need to switch gears and do something mm-hmm. else, uh, you, you sort of know where to go and what to do rather than just sitting there and twiddling your thumbs. Yeah, and there's two sides to that too. And I'm, I'm, I'm as guilty of this as, as anybody but we also don't need to wear our business as a, as a badge of honor because we, we right. because we should be busy. Yeah, it's a good. You point. know, well, I've just been killing it. I've been so. But oh, hopefully, everybody yeah. else has too. Yeah, you know, and like you said, I know some guys. I'm thinking. I don't know if they ever do anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, SermonCentral.com, I think, is our favorite <laughs> their favorite website. You know, um, but we should be busy. Mm-hmm. But like you said, if you are going through a time where maybe it isn't as busy, it doesn't seem to be as much. That's there's, there's a couple ways to handle that. One is to spend some more time studying because you never know when those weeks are going to come when you're not, or those seasons are going to come yeah. when you don't have that time. Yeah. But also get out and actually visit somebody. You know, leave, leave the office, leave the because t- it, it's easier to do nothing at the office than anywhere else. Yes, because because you got the internet, you got yeah. you know you can you, can, you know, or it's like ah, I think I'll rearrange my books again. Yeah. Well, or, or <laughs> yeah, that you know playing around online, checking you know checking recruiting rankings again. Yeah, right? maybe yeah. they signed somebody else today. <laughs> you know that sort of thing, or or even things. It, it's important to keep up with your family, of course, but you know, I'll call my wife and talk for the next hour. Well, I mean, I would love to do that. Well, actually, I, I would love to talk to my wife, but I hate talking on the phone. Oh, nice. um, I'm, I'm not a phone version, but. It's yeah. Check in on your wife every once in a while. Send her a text. Tell your lover. You know all the stuff we talk about our podcast. You know, yeah. flirt, yeah. flirt, flirt over text message. Do that kind of stuff. But a legacy you, of faith. The podcast. Yeah, that's right. right. But but you're at work. Mm-hmm. You know, do the work of an yeah. evangelist. You yeah. Know, if, you know, find some things to do that. You know, community outreach, extra study. Go make a visit. You know. When's the last time you went through your director and realized you know there's a shut in I hadn't visited in a year. I, vis- right. I visited the rest of them, but this person, I frankly, I've just. It's not that I don't care about them. I just frankly forgot they were shut in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I see their name on the list every week, but I see the name on the list every week. Right. And I realize, you know, when's the last time you did it? Get out of the office and go see them. Go do it. Yeah. I, I've got a uh, uh, a little, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's kind of nerdy, but it's, it's a mantra or something. And I've got several of these. Meaningful interactions is one of them. Family first is one of those. And to me, part of the way that I can put my family first, this sounds a little backward, is by working when it's time to work. Yep. And that way, when it's not time to work, I'm not trying to, my my attention isn't divided. Yeah. I'm not thinking, well, I really need to be studying this right now instead of playing with my kids or something like that. A hundred percent. Oh, I, I'm totally that way. Um, and that's, we, we looked at a work one time um, when I was, I was a youth minister, thinking about becoming a pulpit minister. And we, we went to a congregation and, and talked with them and, and we, we really liked it, but I, they did not have an office of the building. It's, well, you can just work from home. And I thought, no, I can't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, and and this may say more about me than I want to admit, but I thought, 
I wouldn't get any work done at all. Because every time I heard the little pitter patter feet upstairs, yeah. I went, Oh, what's yeah, cute? What's Mary going? Carol doing? You know, because right, yeah. that time she was like two or one, mm-hmm. you know, I, was like, yeah. I had to see everything. Or somebody screaming downstairs. Yeah. Like, I got to go. What's happening? Exactly. Yeah. And like you said, one of the gifts I think that I try to give my family is natty leaves for work pretty much the same time every day mm-hmm. you know, obviously it changes sometimes by some surgery or whatever but pretty much that's constant daddy comes home from work pretty much the same time every day as far as you know office kind of stuff yeah. or making visits that sort of thing now we're, we might have visits make as a family at night or a gospel meeting with robert hatfield you know at <laughs> night or or a last leaders meeting or whatever but right. as far as my just you know sermon preparation bible class preparation mm-hmm. visiting you know shut-ins that sort of thing if I can work as much as I can work during that daytime, mm-hmm. then at night I'm dad, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm Leah's husband. I'm not like you said, okay, I, you know, I sat around and, you know, watched, watched the NCAA tournament all afternoon because it was on, you know, and, and, yeah. but, oh, this week has a Sunday. Mm-hmm. I guess yeah. if our kids, sorry, you know, daddy watched basketball afternoon. Now he's got to write a sermon. That's, yeah. that's not right. And it's not fair. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Uh, boy, there's a lot of different areas we could go, and I'm looking, and we've been at this for 45 minutes now, so uh, time goes quickly. we got to get to work. Yeah, we got to work. Wait, what? <laughs> you know what? This week has a Sunday, too. <laughs> uh, closing thoughts in a minute. How about that? And then we'll wrap things up. I want to remind those of you who are watching or listening, the Preachers in Training is a part of the Light Network, a network of Christian podcasts designed to encourage your soul, enlighten your mind, and empower your faith. Check out the website, thelightnetwork.tv. Click on the uh, little image that says Preachers in Training. That's where you'll find all of our episode archives. And there's 200 or 250 of those things now. We've been at this for eight years, uh, and we're still trying to figure out how to be (laughs) preachers. (laughs) Go check those out. I think there's some really neat content there that you will enjoy, uh, including about, you know, a thousand episodes from Adam (laughs) as well. Uh, We'd love to hear from you. Preachers at thelightnetwork.tv is the email address. Preachers at thelightnetwork.tv. Check out that Facebook group as well. We mention it each week. Facebook.com. Search for Preachers in Training. It's a closed group. But we would love to uh, add you in there if you're a listener. And uh, we do try and keep our conversations there focused around our topics of preaching and ministry. Love to hear episode ideas from you. We're already taking episode ideas for next season, the Lord willing, that begins uh, the first full week of January or so. So if you've got a topic you'd like for us to address in the future or a guest that uh, you have in mind, by all means, send that to us in one of those ways. And we'd love to hear from you. You got to check out a legacy of faith.us, right? We've actually moved everything back just to fawnfamily.com. You got to check out <laughs> fawnfamily.com. <laughs> I can't keep up with you guys. I know, I know. F A U G H N family.com. Mm-hmm. Is the podcast still called? Yes, it is. Okay. A Legacy of Faith, the it podcast. Is. It is. Uh, and you can find that wherever you get your podcast and uh, search for that and check it out. You can hear Adam and Leah uh, talking about matters related to the family each week. And that's really, really fun. We've been talking today about the work of the preacher is working. Imagine that. Uh, what do we need to say as we summarize all of this? I've got one point, and I wanted to make the whole time, and I, I kept thinking, maybe, nice. or maybe I didn't want to make it because I'm, I'm going to put the end so you can cut it off if you know or whatever. <laughs> one of the things that uh, I think a lot of preachers, and it's going to be ironic that I say this, I think one of the ways we waste a lot of time is we're trying to do everyone else's ministry and not our own. Mm. Um, I'm worried about what's going on at that congregation, that mm-hmm. congregation, that congregation, that congregation, and I become the brotherhood police wow. instead of being the minister of the central church of Christ. Mm-hmm. Do I care what's going on other places? Yes, because I want the church universal to be pure and whole and right and righteous, but I can't minister every other church. Right. I've got 200 and something people here that, you know, that I'm ministering to and preaching to. And sometimes we get so caught up in every last little issue and every last little thing going on. And we spend all of our time policing the brotherhood mm-hmm. instead of doing our ministry. True. And you want to talk about something that will save you a lot of time. Yeah. Do your ministry, not everybody else's. Yeah. It's freeing too. Boy, mm-hmm. it feels good. <laughs> it feels good to just say, you know what? They have elders over there, <laughs> sure. and they have a preacher over there, <laughs> and those guys have a job to do, and I have one here. It's really nice. <laughs> good stuff. Thanks, Adam. Absolutely, it's good to be with you in person. I know it's good. It's, it's intimidating. I'm telling you, it's it's. it's whew. <laughs> I'm looking forward to Skype. Uh, yeah, that's not. <laughs> And thank you for being a part of this edition of Preachers in Training. I uh, hope you'll continue to be with us every week. Brand new podcast episodes of this podcast release on Thursdays from uh, those 
places where I mentioned a minute ago, TheLightNetwork.tv or our podcasting and YouTube partners. <laughs> That's going to do it for this edition of Preachers in Training. Until next time, I'm Robert Hatfield. Let's go preach the word. Preach the word.